Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I want to continue on with the uh, vintage sewing techniques, uh, the whole program that's connected to Susanna Vintage Blend Studios. So each month, as you know, if you've been with me a little while, we're getting a prompt and it's something to do with vintage sewing techniques. So this prompt is the tools you use, the equipment, the, the things that we used to use back in the day. So as you know, if you've watched part one of this, I had found a image of a very old sewing machine that sort of felt very vintage to me. And I had transferred onto this piece of calico, some of these types of, um, images to embroider and the plan was to stitch around it all and then work it into my project. Now I filmed part one of this back in February and now it's uh, March and you guys will be watching this in goodness knows when. Let me have a look. Like it's one of those projects that I'm sort of picking up from time to time and putting away and picking up. So you'll be watching this in May but it is only March and I have got a spare moment and I thought, oh, I, I might just pull that project out again. And like always, when you revisit things after a little while, your brain's sort of thinking a bit differently and you come up with different ideas. So I'm, I'm still doing what I'm doing, but I am reinventing the wheel just a little bit. So I thought what I'll do is I'm going to start the actual composition. Now, my plan in the last video was to go ahead and stitch these with the cottons and then work them into the composition. Since then, I've changed my mind. So I have cut out that one and that one because I believe that's probably enough. I don't think I'm going to need this little vintage. It's too big for the space. So at this stage, I'm just going to pop it to one side. It may turn up somewhere in the pieces. Who knows? So I've trimmed these back to as small as I think I can get them. Because, um, yeah, like I said, I don't have a lot of space. The other thing is I've been thinking about this sewing machine and I'd like it to be sitting on a table, but not so much a table as you would imagine, as I just said that sentence, more like sitting on um, the illusion of a table. So I just want to work on the composition this morning and then I'll be ready to sort of start stitching. I grabbed some doilies, some little ones. I really love this one, but it's just, I think, too big. And it'd be a shame to cut it. I think I want to keep that in its entirety. So I want to make it look like there's a tablecloth sitting here for the sewing machine to sit on. And then work these other pieces in around it. So let's just have a little look. No, too small. Too white, that'd be too small. Oh, it only leaves these. I got two of the same here. This one here has got a chopping, we've been chopping into that, so that's probably a good one. Oh, I like the color, it tends to blend a little better. Now there's a bottom and a top to this. Yeah, there we go, because there's these little flowers crocheted on the edge of it, so it's got a three dimensional feel to it. So let's tuck that on this corner and then we'll put our sewing machine on the table. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I just felt like I needed something to break the sewing machine from the background just to sort of not have it blend so much. Let me pull that up a little bit so you can see. Yeah. And I'm pretty confident from memory I can come out a little bit on the side. So I may not even need 
to cut this off. So what I might do is try and adjust that so that maybe I can get more. Be a shame not to get this center, even though it is damaged. Maybe I can get a little bit more of that shape. Yeah, that's pretty good. If that cuts through there. All right, let's pin that. Oh, there's a flower under that. That's not pinning real well. That's better. Okay. So Susanna's project has been just something ticking along in the background because there's a lot of work in everything else I'm doing. It's been good just to have this one when I have a spare moment completely change my direction of thinking and just pick up this one and have another play with it so it's been great to have it sitting to one side and if i'm going somewhere it's a good one just to take with i'm going to cut that there and through there There we go. So grandma's sewing machine, gee, that was straight cutting, wasn't it? Doesn't matter, I'll trim it up and muck around with it. So this piece could even pop up somewhere else, we'll see. That'll help blend it all together. Let me bring the camera up a little bit. So you get, that's better. Now, this little guy and this guy, well, it sort of feels like it could just be up the top here. It's a shame to cover all that. What about this guy? Maybe I can... There's nothing exciting happening here. Nearly too big. So do I trim it down some more so it tucks in better? I think I might have to. If it was long ways, this background fabric, it would be able to fit, but we need to go up and down, which is just a Great challenge. So it could slide in there, but it sort of feels cramped, doesn't it? Maybe it just connects in up here. Yeah, I don't mind that. And this guy. I want them to be on a background. I don't want to stitch straight onto this. I do want to see this beautiful camphor quilt. It sort of feels like it's going to overpower everything, doesn't it? The plan was just to pop it in there and start lacing it up. But, you know, I cannot get past this camphor quilt. I just, I want to admire it. So I don't think I can actually put that on. Maybe I keep all my work to this one corner. Let's have a look at this little scrap piece of lace. There's nothing exciting happening there. So what if that came down there? And I just sort of wish across the page, you know? Um, yeah, 
I'm thinking along those lines, to be honest. It's a shame that that is missing out of there. Do I get another doily? What would it look like? A slightly different colour, oh, marginally. Am I ruining a good doily for no reason? Yeah, I am. Would one of these other doilies work? So stained and old and gorgeous. Do I pop him in there? I tend to like this, to be honest. I don't know why. I sort of think it blends it all together. And I think if I stretch that, oh, there's a hole there. Oh, my goodness, you poor thing. I think if I stretch that lace just a little bit, no one will ever know that that was missing. And I think it works. So I'm just going to pin it for now because I think that'll work beautifully. I know the prompt is vintage sewing equipment and we've got some old cotton bobbins and things like that. But I sort of, I don't know, I think I've got caught up in the romance of this piece of camphor quilt. I know Susanna will forgive me. She'd be exactly the same. She'd be sitting here going, oh, look at that. <laughs> She would. She definitely would. So I think the best I'm going to get for the prompt is a pair of old scissors, a couple of cotton reels. I'll try and make them look as vintagey as I can. So I'll bring in these browns and then I might, um, I think I'm going to couch, couch cotton onto them. I did that in the Jessie Chorley panel and I used a cream thread to couch it on and it just made it look like literally that it was cotton there. I don't think I'm going to need green. So I'm going to pop them away. But I'll keep it in these tones, I think, the chocolate, the rose and the soft pink. I'm going to need some scissors, a colour for them. Do I be as bold as black? Or do I make them a brown so that they're a little... Oh, look, I'll keep it out because it could handle black. I'm going to use that to couch it down so that I get another contrasting colour in, as in stitch the pieces down the sewing machine. I'm not going to do all the embroidery on the sewing machine. I'm just jumping up to grab my cottons. I just feel like that blue fabric is very strong. There's a brown that could be used for the scissors. Yeah, that tones in, get rid of the black. Gosh, I just don't seem to use black much. Now, what I thought, I do need to bring the impression that there's a needle in the sewing machine down. So that will be a bit of a challenge, doing that there's lace there, but I think I can drop some stitches down. The other thing I want to do, so we're not going to use this vintage guy, so I'm going to pop him back in the box for the project. The other thing I need is some fabric to sit under the needle of the sewing machine. Oh, look, we've got some snaps. They were pulled out. They'd be fun to include. That'll be the last piece. If I'm going to add some paper, I do like that. If I'm going to add some paper, it'll be right at the very end so that I don't damage it any more than it is. I do like that. That's a bit random. Be a lovely spot to pop it. Mmm, okay. Shame I can't get that on. I could break it down smaller, but it's going to lose the... 
I might just hang on to it and maybe stitch it anyway. Where's some backing fabric there? I'll just put it back with this piece because I took it off of there. Just pop that back together. Who knows where it might pop up in the actual pops. And it'd be nice to have a couple little elements. It's just tricky to know what colors to do it. Being that, um, you know, you don't know where it's gonna end up in the future. Now I need some fabric to poke out from underneath the needle and thread. So we want a complementary little piece of yumminess that I'm sort of going to cut and make it look like it's hanging off of the sewing machine. So we've got to check. And that does look nice and grungy. We could do a pop of colour. Oh, I don't mind that. We could, oh, what about, what about bringing in some of our floral from earlier in the book? Yes, now we're talking. Oh, the flower's too big, like the sewing machine's so small. Do the flowers look like silly because they're massive, but they could be, could work. Is there a smaller morsel? Hmm. What else have we got here? We've got some scraps from a Tim Holtz, something geometric. Oh, I sort of don't mind that. I think the flowers are overpowering it. Not that I want it to be blendy blendy, but I don't mind that actually. It sort of pops because it's got a white background. Goodness me, I don't know how much effort can go into picking a piece of scrap fabric. You know why I like this? It's because of that. Those blue lines, I feel like work with this piece of fabric. Does that make sense? Sort of not the right shape, but I probably could make it work. I don't want to make it too Let's just cut it out. Goodness me, got a little caught up here. Can I cut it off? I think it's going to be this piece. I did, well, I did like that, but I feel like I'm heading down a different path. Let's put all these little morsels back before I see something else that takes my fancy. I'm really waiting for the log cabin. I need to check when that is because I'm looking forward to doing that in a slow stitch way. So what's May, June? Oh, it's the next one. That's exciting. Quilting, the log cabin block. Oh yeah. Okay. Log cabin. Can't wait. June, for goodness sakes. Like I said, it's only March for me here. I'm pre-recording a little and the log cabin is going to be June oh, it's just crazy I'm 
I think I can make that work just by having that piece of fabric there like that. I get those blue lines showing. Where's some pins? Yep, I like that. I'm so pleased I didn't rush this piece back when I first started planning it. Because I feel like it's actually come together better than I thought it would. Right, let's get that onto there. I think this design that I'm looking at, I don't know if it's just me, but I think it's probably this little piece of fabric is more vintage looking. It sort of feels like it could be from a, you know, a different era. Okay, that feels nice and secure. So I'm going to get rid of that before I start looking any further and see other morsels. Now, if that does, it will. That's going to go there. It has to. It'd be lovely. Do I need anything through here? Or do I just... Do I just let... Let's just pick this up. Do I just let the fabric sing? I can't help myself. What's that look like? Oh, I do like that. Yep. Mm. It's like a table and everything's lying on the table ready. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Be a nice little home for that little cutie. And it's nicely stained and... I'm just going to lift it up a little bit, bring it over a little bit. So the cotton and the sewing um what am I trying to say? I can't even think. These things are behind the lace. I like how that's laid. I like how I can still see the camphor quilt. through this doily because it is so open you can actually still see the lines oh i love it yeah no this will this will be good and then that is little british snaps they can sit here on that corner picks up those lines through there it's all in the blues yeah love it love it love it okay um, I'm just going to jump up and close my door because my husband's in the kitchen. And he's going to start banging and clanging. Okay. I, th I think we have a plan. I think we have a plan. So what I'm going to do is just stitch down a few things. And then I can... Get rid of some pins. So what I might do first is I might just get I might just get this little doily here down on this corner. which will pin down oh, unthreaded. I need a smaller needle. That felt like a crowbar going through that fabric. Something a bit finer. This, this camphor quilt is very dense. That's probably why it makes them so warm without needing without needing the um, the layers. Oh, I'm getting such a sore finger at the end. I need to put a, a bit of, look, it's split. That's not gonna work real well, but anyway, give it a go. I'm getting a very sore finger. 
I need to start wearing protective equipment. I much prefer to, you know, feel my way through the fabrics and things like that. So wearing a thimble is not the easiest, but having said that, these little silicone ones that I picked up, oh, who knows where, it was like a pack of, pack of six or eight or something. They've been really good, but it's not as good as your fingers, is it? So if I can get this little edge secure, that'll hold my little panel in place for the embroidery. And then I might just do a couple little invisible stitches through there. I think they were so invisible they've actually not done anything. Yeah, so invisible they've held nothing. <laughs> okay. I hate pins in my work. They catch your thread, they catch your finger. So I'm very much a fan of just whizzing around your piece and getting all your elements down. It sort of just makes such a difference. Okay, now I'll just do this little bit of doily. And then what I want to do with you guys before I leave you is I just want to show you how I couch the cotton thread on those reels of cotton. Everything else will be pretty straightforward or just be embroidered. So I won't bore you with those details. But I will show you what I did with the cotton reels that were on the Jesse Chorley panel I did 12 months ago. Oh gosh, it might even be longer. I've lost track of time. But I do need these pieces to be a little secure. So I've got time. It's only 28 minutes into the video. And then at the end of the video, I'll come back and show you the completed piece. I don't think it'll be anything real full on anywhere else. I'll put a, a fair amount of work into that. And then the rest will just be all stitched down. Might put a few highlight stitches here and there, but I'll see. I haven't sort of got any great plans yet, but something might come along. You know how it is. You never, never know. So I'm going to end that off. And I'm going to go straight to that embroidery and do a little bit of work on that. I think I can get rid of that pin. Yep. I think I can get rid of that pin. So that's eliminated a few pins from my... I might just do a little bit more. I would love to get rid of that pin. So let's drop a few invisible stitches in the center because they're going to be, I'm going to couch. Gee, I'm quite surprised just how dense this piece of camphor quilt is. If you were stitching a lot on it, I think it would be quite hard work. It must be because there's so many layers of fabric there. To push through it is quite a challenge, to be honest. I'm quite surprised. I had visions of doing 
you know, some major projects on camphor quilt, but mm, I don't think I will because that is quite dense and my fingers would not appreciate it. So that's interesting, an interesting find. Okay, I can get rid of that. That's not going anywhere. And I can't stop because I've got thread. I might as well just use it, hey? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah, that's not. I had visions of seed stitch and all sorts on this piece. But boy, it would be tough going pushing a needle through this background fabric. So buyer beware, if you're thinking of buying a beautiful piece of camphor quilt and then working on top of it, just be aware that it will be tough going with the needle. Like I could certainly get a more narrow, sharper needle, but then that comes with problems too because you're working with such a fine needle, your fingers at the other end are working hard. Okay. All right. So, I don't need that piece of fabric. I had thought maybe that would work on the little table. Probably would, but no, it's just a scrap. Okay. Now. What I want to do is these threads. I'll use a pink and a pink. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down the cotton. As if it is on the reel. So we want just lines across, like so. Now, because we're only going a short distance, we can potentially do two. I wouldn't go any further than that because you really need to get it starting to anchor down. Might leave it at just one. Then we need a thread over the top of it all. Now, I think these cottons will actually be too thick. I'm gonna need a finer, finer little thread. This little guy, I think, can donate himself. Then I can use a finer needle, and that's a benefit. Okay, so now move everything out of the way. Bring it up. And I'm just going to over stitch. Let's zoom in a little bit because I think I'm settled and ready to go. I'm just going to do a little over stitch here to catch. that pink stitch that pink thread I 
and it puts like a little stripey feature on the thread, which is really sweet. It's like it could be a, <clears throat> a, um, a variegated thread. If you didn't want that highlight stitch, of course, you could just pick a, a pink pink cotton or something and stitch it down and no one would ever know that it was there. But I want to make a highlight of it. This is classic Jessie Chorley. So now I pick up the next needle. It takes a while to do this, but it's so cute, so worth it. So now I can push that one in, bring it through, and then while I'm here, I'm just going to bring that thread back, that needle back up, and just sit it to one side, ready for the next. So I need probably one more stitch on that top thread, the first one. And then I can start working my way back over the second one. Create such a pretty effect. And it looks like your bobbin literally has thread on it because you've created quite a dimensional feel to it. Oh goodness, that quilt. This is going to take a while. Oh, I'm pleased I'm only doing the one little image. Isn't it funny how things work out? I had a feeling that I would struggle to fit it all and then, like I said, I was starting to cover the beautiful camphor quilt and that's sort of what's drawn me to the whole project for this one is that gorgeous piece. So if I just dance around the outer edge here, like I can add some buttons and I'm sure there'll be other things pop up on it. But this, yeah, this will be good. There we go. Couching at its best, two-toned, and actually using it to make it look like a thick 3D thread is pretty cool. So now I can bring my needle up at the base here on the next line, ready to couch down the next one. So let's lay this guy down. Oops, caught a pin. See, that's, uh, I think what I'll do once I get this sort of happening, so you know where I'm heading with it, I will, first of all, if I carry on, I'll, I will um, do some more invisible stitch. That way all my pins are gone and then I can relax into doing this little embroidery. Now we're cooking. What's the time? How are we going? I mean, we need to stop at about 50 minutes. Oh, we've got plenty of time. We need to stop probably about 50 minutes in to the end, just so we've got plenty of time to show you the final piece. And I can add it to the end of this video. There Oh, that's so hard to do that. You know, when you go through and you come out the back end at the same time in one move. Yeah, that's not going to happen with this little quilt piece. These little overcast stitches on this pink thread actually look like the little itty bitty stitches on the camphor quilt. You can see those tiny little stitches there. 
and they're a similar color. So I, I do like how that sort of feels like it's meant to be. It's a little bit special. So now I can come up at the bottom here. Pop my needle down, pick up my big one again. And lay another stitch. It's as simple as that. And I'll bring this guy back up. Sort of helps lock it in a little bit too. Not that it's a big distance I'm traveling, so it's sort of, it's okay. Riveting viewing for you. Yeah, that's going to be really good. Happy with that progress. And I think the other cotton will look pretty with the pale of pink on it. The only thing is that is a smaller. So that's a number eight. That's a number 12. Hmm. This number 12 is finer than this guy. So that being said, I may need to go looking for a number eight because that'll be really, really fine to be doing this type of couching on. I sort of need the thread to be a little chunkier. So I may need to rethink the plan for that little guy. I could probably even go thicker. I'll have to see what pinks I have. I have something. Gosh, there is going to be hours of work just doing these two threads. Gosh, don't we bury ourselves in our projects? Some of the things we stitch. You just, <clears throat> you, you look at it at the end and you've probably worked a, you know, a 10 centimetre or a, you know, a, a 15 centimetre space and it's taken days. Gosh, no wonder some people think we're crazy doing this. But that's the beauty of slow stitch, isn't it? It's slow. There's a kookaburra. Can anyone hear that? I should have brought that cream needle up. I don't want it getting caught. So let's get him up down the bottom here, ready for the next stitch. He stays in behind my work. He'll get tangled for sure. At least here I can control what I can see. Hence why I come back up. There we go. How are we going for time? Because time does fly. Plenty. I'll just finish this row. And get this down and then I'm going to leave you alone I'm gonna to toddle off finish stitching this all together and then I will come straight back and show you how it evolved and um, there's our block completed lovely come on We might stitch the piece of paper with those little press studs on it together so that you can see how I work paper. Not 
that there's any great trick to it, but there might be something you've wondered. How do you stitch paper into your pieces? So we might do that together. Okay, bringing my needle with the cream back up there, ready to lay down the next row. And that literally starts to look like cotton on a reel. It's very tricky. Thanks to Jessie Chorley. This is very much her style of work. Love it. Okay. All right, guys. So just to recap, I will continue on doing this style of couching and I will find myself another pink that is the same number eight. So it's just got that same feel about it. Otherwise, I think that'll be too fine. That's sort of very similar to what I'm actually couching over with. So let me just bring the camera back up. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I'm ready to go. I'll save the little piece for when I come back and we can stitch that down onto the finished piece. So I'll just pop that in my needle, needle, um, oh, I've got pins and needles everywhere. Pop that in my little needle carrier and that one and that one. So I um, don't think I'll need that again. I might pop that in and I need to sort that out. I'll need the browns. So there you go. I'm ready to go off and stitch. I'll save those doilies for another day. Lovely. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello everyone, I'm back. Okay, so I've been busy, busy girl and I have stitched all of this piece in here and I've added some embellishments and I've highlighted the sewing machine by attaching some thread and a bobbin and some charms. So I will bring it up to the camera to show you where I'm at. So I continued couching that thread on and then use the cream thread to over stitch it all into position. It took a while, but it is so worth it because it just looks like you've got bobbins full of variegated cotton. I put my scissors into position and then I found these little charms, which are little um, safety pins. Now over here, I had stitched an actual bobbin there with the thread coming off. And when I went hunting for some embellishments, I found these buttons. Um, they are like that one there. So that allowed me to stitch it into position and then I wound some pink thread around it to make it look like it's actually, you know, working the sewing machine. I did have these ones as well, which I did like, but, um, it was sort of bulky and I was a bit concerned that I was adding too much bulk to the piece and then my eyes spotted those and there was a few in there. There was even some little tiny ones which I probably could have used as well but I went the bigger because what the hang, it just looked really cool. Um, then I kept sort of digging and that's where it all got out of hand and I found this little pack where I had needles in gold and silver, and then this mannequin body, and then some thimbles. There was a little sewing machine in there too, a little black sewing machine, but I didn't end up using it. I'll save that for a rainy day. It's so good to use some of these pieces because they've literally been sitting in that uh, container probably for 15 years. So it's lovely to finally use some bits. The um, I ended up adding this. I nearly didn't. It's a bow made out of tape measure. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh, that'd be good. And then I popped it on the piece. I'm like, oh, I don't really like it. So then I was like, oh, I've got a very old tape measure, maybe, which was purchased to um, cut some bits off and add to uh, slow stitch in the future. So I jumped up, grabbed it, and I just can't cut it. I don't know why. I think it's because I've only had it for couple months. I picked it up at the antique market 
and I just can't cut it. So I'm like, no, not yet. I just think it's beautiful. So, yeah, just, yeah, I love it. I can't cut it. So I thought, right, I trade off. I will stitch that on. I know it doesn't really match. It's a little bit jarring. But then I thought, well, maybe I could add some buttons that help bring in that tone. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just adding for the sake of adding. Like that one would work to bring in that pop of yellow. I sort of... I had these chrome ones, these chrome thimble and needle too, and it didn't look right. But now that I've created this cluster down here, I sort of don't mind it. It's like I've built a little story by itself. So it sort of feels like it does work. Yeah, maybe I'll do some little buttons. Like it's getting out of control now. It's seriously should stop but I can't <laughs> it feels so good to be in this pack because it's been so long since yeah I do I do like that I think I will use them what the hang I had this button as well which was like a concertina which probably would have looked better but I like that one now I will stitch on those three little buttons but I do want to add also this vintage piece so i want to stitch it on let's get some thread and a needle that's reasonably sharp let's get that into position now Paper's not very forgiving. If you get your needle in the wrong spot, it is forever in that spot. So you just, I think the biggest thing is just to take your time. What I might do is go down the holes that are already there from the little clips. Instead of creating too many more new holes, I wonder if I can get in there. Close enough. I can't get where the clip is because the clip's in there, but I can get close enough. Oh, you can't even see, for goodness sakes. It's a good start, isn't it? I'm really happy with the way this piece has come together. But I must say, stitching onto this camphor quilt scrap, oh my goodness, that was not easy. And my fingers are really sore. Like, I'm not to the point where I would need pliers to pull through. But boy, I would hate to be doing a big project <clears throat> on a big piece of this stuff. So buyer beware if you are considering buying a, a beautiful piece of camphor quilt and uh, working something onto it. Buyer beware because it's so dense that it's just, it's hard work. So I'm glad I haven't invested in a lot of these types of scraps because I don't think I would do it as a background again. I would probably use snippets of it. You know, you can handle little pieces here and there. But this piece was, yeah, <clears throat> quite a challenge, needless to say. So there we go. There's our little morsel, little heritage piece stitched in. I think it matches in beautifully. Nice to have a little home for it. It was in one of the drawers in the Singer sewing machine, the treadley that I inherited from Grandma. 
So it's nice to know that she actually went and took these little snaps off. And now I've got this little piece forever stitched into this. Very vintage. Okay. So what I might do, I do have thread still attached. The other thing is left to do is put it into my book which um, be just a case of picking a page the page next in the series is the one that it's sitting on but it does go past the pages prior so i would need to add a piece of lace to the one before to pad it out i'll show what you meant show you what you meant i'll show you what i mean and I just don't think that piece would be enhanced by a piece of lace. So I'm thinking about skipping a page <clears throat> and popping it in somewhere else. So these buttons that I'm adding is just to busy it up a little bit, just to add a little bit extra interest down to this bottom corner. And I sort of feel like they, they all match. Do I want them? Just probably overthinking all this. <clears throat> oh, goodness. It's just like pushing a needle through a wall of resistance. This background. Oh. And I've actually sustained a small injury on my finger. Like My fingers are pretty worn as it is because of the amount of stitching I do. But the first couple stitches probably caught me a bit underwear and I just pushed it in thinking that it would be fine to go and I got pushed back and my finger actually got cut right where that sweet spot is that the needle sort of works from. <clears throat> so I've got a bit of a sore finger from this piece. It'll be fine in a day or so. But it's hard because you know you've got a little injury and you want to keep stitching but you probably should stop and that's not going to happen <laughs> so i should be wearing my thimble so don't feel sorry for me it's self-inflicted and i know how to improve the situation and i'm not really doing that yet but i think half the battle is this background That's good. <clears throat> Just a couple little stitches. It doesn't have to be there in strength because it's, you know, not being used daily as a fastener. Okay. Now, I think I did have plans of putting this piece on the back. I can't remember what I said in the first video. So if I was to put it here, which is technically the next page, it would stitch in there. You probably wouldn't get it into that crease because it just would too bulk so bulky. So I'll just come back and sit it on the top of the curve there. And now if I pick this up and pretend that that's stitched, that's what I see. It's poking out. So in the past, I would have just trimmed it but I just like the plain look of this it's just all about that cut work on that doily so I decided I would go elsewhere so let's just move my little book over now the next page doesn't really work because this little doily down the bottom corner here it just doesn't fit so it has to be a page that um, can handle the style that it is. Look, I've got a sketch here of flowers. Something was going through my brain. So I've decided I think I'm going to put it into here, which will work. So what I do is I make sure I've just got the... Um, one piece of calico so if 
if you're new to all of this and you want to see how I put this book together, I'll need to go and find that episode. I believe it's part of the Tim Holtz series because I did quite a few pieces just focusing on Tim Holtz paper and fabrics. <clears throat> And I made some journals and things like that. So in there is the actual putting together of this book. So I might put the link to that series down below. But it pretty much is a piece of calico and then a second piece of calico stitched with three whole pamphlet stitch into the spine and then I can still split those pieces apart to get in there and stitch a decorative piece on and then I do the same here decorative piece on and I can get my hand in there and stitch and then when these two pages have something on they can come together to be forever sealed and it hides all of your stitching. Now my signature the plan is to only have two on one side and two pieces of embroidery on the other side. And that would then make up a signature of four actual pieces and then it's stitched in. And in this particular booklet, I've stitched in, let's call it now a signature, which would have four pieces of embroidery, one signature, two signatures, because I'm now going to put this piece in a brand new signature. I've made my pages slightly smaller than the actual pieces that I can fit in this book, as you can see here. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It was just that this fabric was already cut to this width and I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. It'll have enough to secure it and I can always secure my two pieces of embroidery together when the signatures start forming up. And then I've got... <clears throat> Another signature here. So in total, stitched into the spine are these three signatures and it's a soft spine. So I get to sort of see all of this lovely texture and my spine will take shape here, which is layers of fabric joining these two book covers together. So that's just, you know, roughly what I did with my Tim Holtz creating the book. Before this piece all got attached to the covers, I did some slow stitching in here as well. So you can do like a decorative spine, then attach it to your covers. I, I added a pocket. I'll probably put the prompts in there at the end so I know what this project was all about in the years to come. So all I'm going to do now is because I can get to the back of everything, you can really stitch in your piece easily and once again it's just invisible stitch <clears throat> it's a case of attaching it now so if you are doing a roxy journal of stitchery and you're working through some pieces that are like this this is how i attach mine to my actual journal so my fabric's way back here so i only need to bring my needle up through here oh lost my thread i'm probably running out of time now i've gone over time but um we can do a, a few minutes of this type of work <clears throat> so i'm just coming up in the back here and doing a, just a little stitch just to secure and then i can jump couple centimeters <clears throat> excuse me my voice is a bit foggy this morning then I go back down go a couple centimeters along again but the tiny little stitch on the front a couple centimeters and the whole time I'm catching my piece to just avoid any obstacles like actual embroidery So I will continue just stitching down everything so that it's in my book 
forever. And I, I guess if you ever wanted to pull a piece out and frame it, you can because you're just removing this little tacking stitch that's just keeping it on the page. And I've done that before. Occasionally I've pulled pieces out to, um, you know, add to something else or you, you know, pretty much use in another project or gift to someone. So these journals can be a bit of a storage place for your pieces. So I'm just running out of thread. I'm slowly working my way along the top. <coughs> I haven't put my piece right into that crease because it'll just bulk up. So that just that's ended off with a little knot. So I have stitched, <coughs> excuse me, I have stitched up there and across here. Now I can remove those pins. And I will probably come through the center and I'll come through there and that'll be plenty to hold it into my little book, but that's good enough for now. So there's my piece all stitched in just about and um, done. So vintage sewing has been honored with a collection of vintage sewing bits and pieces. So I've got room for another piece here, another one there. Yeah, I love it. That will fit beautifully. And I'll have this little doily poking out the side. Very good. Okay, everyone. Thank you, thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video when Susanna provides us with her next prompt, which is very exciting. It is going to be... Um, log cabin so I'm hoping to really play with that and I've got some gorgeous scraps in mind so I will see you all in the next video bye for now